ทำหายอาฮะอ right, welcome to episode three from chapter 14. And in this episode, we're going to cover what a pedigree is. Now, pedigrees are used to follow a Mendelian trait through a family tree. So the first off you want to remember is a pedigree is essentially a family tree. You're showing how members of your family are related to each other. But what we're also going to do on this family tree is we're going to mark in who is showing a Mendelian trait, who is not. You know, we're, basically we're going to find out is who's homozygous dominant. Who's heterozygous and who's homozygous recessive? We can find all of that stuff inside a pedigree. But before we show you what a pedigree is going to look like, I do want to go over what the symbols for a pedigree are. So I want you to pay attention down here to this chart. Okay, first off, you want to remember is that the squares are guys and the circles are females. And a great way to remember the difference between the circles and the blocks is remember this. And all of you teenage girls will understand this. Guys. Are blockheads. Oh. Okay, so that's how it works for me. So the guys are the blockheads, and then obviously the circles, there would be the girls. Okay, now I do want you to notice right here this colored in one. This one means it's an affected male. In other words, it shows Mendelian trait. So it's going to express that Mendelian trait. And same way with the circle, a colored in girl is going to be a, a female who shows this trait. Okay. Now some other uh, symbols you're going to see in a pedigree occasionally. All right, let's say we're doing a, a family tree and we know a couple had a, a baby, but we haven't been able to figure out what sex it is. You know, maybe it was uh, a person from two, three, four generations ago, and nobody can remember, and there's no documentation if it was a boy or boy or a girl. So we just use this diamond. Okay, a line between a square and a circle, or a circle and a square. This is called a marriage line, and basically what this means is that they, they, they made it. They're, they're married, they're going to have an offspring. Okay, now this one here is an unusual one. You don't see it very often, but there's actually two lines right here. And consanguous means that they're basically very close relatives. So maybe some really close um, cousins, somewhere to that part. So really what it's leading to is this kind of what we call in the genetics world It's inbreeding. And inbreeding will lead to an increase in homozygosity. Let me get this written down in here. Homozygosity. And what this means is, is if you're going to mate with members of your own family, uh, the offspring are going to have many of the alleles the same, which makes sense because their gene pool is real small. So we normally do not see this in pedigrees. Unless you're looking at a unique pedigree for a very isolated population, like maybe a population that's that's on an island or in an isolated valley in mountain areas, or uh, it's separated by geographic barriers like maybe oceans and uh, mountain ranges again, uh, impenetrable jungles, deserts, that kind of stuff. So very rare, but you may come across it occasionally. All right. Now these ones over here on this side, these are ones we're going to see more often. So this is very typical. Here we've got a husband and a wife, and they have a son. So this vertical line right here is called an offspring line. And since this is a square, they had a baby boy. Now over here in this family, we have a husband and a wife, and then we have one, two, three, four children. But if you look at this one right here, you see these uh, diagonal lines. This is twins, and in this case, fraternal twins, or in other words, non-identical twins. Identical twins will have a little vertical line and then it branches off because identical twins do come from the same zygote. So they do have the same genetic code. So this is why there's that little vertical line in there. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at some actual pedigrees. Okay. First, we're going to look at what is called an autosomal dominant trait. Now, a dominant trait means that it's always expressed. But the autosomal, remember from a previous, this is a non-sex chromosome. And remember, this would be one of the first 22 chromosomes. Remember, the, the autosomes are delineated by numbers. The sex chromosomes get letters, the X and the Y. Okay? Now, you'll notice here that in an autosomal dominant uh, individual, all they need is one allele to show this trait. 
So the heterozygous individuals in this case are going to display the trait. So as you can see here, this trait shows up quite a bit and you'll notice very, very few of these individuals are homozygotes because these alleles are typically very rare. All right, now dwarfism, especially one uh, uh, particular kind, is caused by a dominant allele. And if you've ever watched uh, Little People Big World on TLC, that family is affected by dwarfism. And in fact, the mom is heterozygous and the dad is heterozygous. How do I know that? Because some of their kids are of normal height. And so most of their kids actually came out like that. So if you did a Punnett square with that family and you filled it in, you'd have, let's pick a different color for this. There we go. You'd have big D, big D. So that'd be a dwarf. Big D, little D. Big D, little D. And then here's their non-dwarf kids. So it just came out that I believe only, they probably have three or four kids if I can remember right. Only one of them was uh, a dwarf, even though there was a 75% chance that they'd be a dwarf. Okay, uh, Progeria is another one. This is the, uh, you kind of age rapidly. Very rare. Um, the kids kind of look like they're 90 years old, but they're 11. All right. And then polydactyly and syndactyly, the dactyly deals with your digits. So think of like your fingers. Okay. And so poly means you've got more than five fingers, and then sin means you have less, so then you would have three fingers. So you, maybe you'd have one, two, three fingers, and one thumb, okay? Both of those are dominant traits. All right, let's look down here at the bottom half. Here we've got autosomal recessive. Okay, remember, you're still doing with non-sex chromosomes. But recessive, this means you have to be homozygous on this case, okay? So in order for you to show the trait, you need to have two alleles. So if you look through here, you know, you only see a couple of them who have it, but you see a bunch of heterozygous individuals. Well, when we have a uh, autosomal recessive trait, the homozygous, whoops, let me rephrase this one. The heterozygous individuals, let me get myself caught up here. The heterozygous individuals, they're called carriers. They don't display the trait themselves, but they can pass it on to the next generation. So if you look over here on these three examples of autosomal recessive traits, typically these are done by individuals who are carriers. So we'll do pretty much the same Punnett square we have up above. So we have two individuals who are heterozygous, so they're carriers. So let's put it in a different color here. So big D, big T. Okay, that, that's a non-carrier. This individual is gonna be a carrier, this individual a carrier. And this individual is the one who's going to get the trait, all right? So, for example, in albinism, this means that you have basically no skin color, okay? That would be that individual right here. Cystic fibrosis, we're going to cover this one in, in another screencast coming up. Basically, your body produces a very thick mucus that has a tendency to plug your digestive system and, and your... Uh, your, uh, your lungs and whatnot. And then uh, PKU, which stands for phenylketonuria. Uh, you have a hard time breaking down, I believe it's phenylalanine, and that will cause you to have some, some brain deformities if you have phenylalanine in your diet. But in this case, if you don't have phenylalanine in your diet, you're just completely normal, okay? So in all three of these, you typically get it because mom is a carrier and dad is a carrier and there's the affected individual, okay? That's going to end this episode, so until the next screencast, we're going to catch you on that flip side. <laughs>